Welcome back. Tax troubles for Europe's second biggest economy, France. The French government came up $19 billion short after overestimating its 2013 tax income. They were expecting to raise more than double that, closer to $40 billion. President Hollande's austerity measures included tax hikes on income, corporations, goods, and services. Now, the main opposition party, the UMP, claims that overtaxing actually causes tax revenue to drop, and it also hurts France, France's prospects for a sustained recovery. Former UMP budget minister said that the more you raise taxes, the more you signal to households to save money in order to pay their taxes. For an in-depth look at the issues here in France's economy overall, we'll welcome Jacob Kirkgaard, economist and senior fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Welcome back and thank you. I know you just got off a plane out from Europe, actually, so you're the perfect person um, to talk about this, this, this issue with the tax. Let's start with that. Yep. They're short about $20 billion. Okay. How serious is that? Well, I think it is it's, it's a huge political problem, a credibility problem for uh, President Hollande and his government. And it's also a major uh, economic problem because, you know, they have committed to hitting certain budget targets and now they're all of a sudden $20 billion uh, short for this year. So they're going to have to do more cuts than they otherwise uh, would have had to which is not what you want to do when your economy is already weak and your unemployment is growing. Before we get to what happens next, why did they get it wrong, or I should say, how did they get it so wrong? Well, I mean, they, they were basically over-optimistic. You can't really say that they cooked the books, but it's well known that France has a long history of being very optimistic on its growth forecasts. And when you feed a, an optimistic growth number into you know, a projection for tax revenue, it gives you a big number. Now, unfortunately, it came out that they were short. And, and uh, so it's, it's a forecasting era. I'm going to play devil's advocate for just a moment here. The economy in France basically is at a standstill. It's basically flat. The unemployment situation is still a problem that hasn't been really resolved as of yet. I mean, couldn't the administration argue that thing, we were overly optimistic, things didn't grow quite as much as we thought, and that's why there is this shortfall, no big deal. Uh, yes, except that $20 billion is a big deal because uh, France is still committed to its European uh, deficit numbers. And they're going to have to meet those numbers one way or the other. Otherwise, they're going to have a big political fight with Germany and other members of the uh, European Union. So, uh, yes, it's not a big deal except that they're going to have to find the money somewhere else. This administration has gone on record saying that they don't want to borrow more money. They don't want to make the deep cuts, but now there's this shortfall. So the natural question is what needs to be done next, or I should say what could be done next? Well, I mean, they're going to have to cut. I mean, th this shortfall came up because they raised taxes probably too much. And what happened is that because Francois Hollande in, uh, early in his administration raised taxes on so many different things that is essentially tanked, in my opinion at least, the what, French. What do you want to see them cut? Well, I want, to cut, I want to see them cut the overall size of the French government. That means I want to see them privatize uh, some of their many, many corporate holdings. I want to see them actually lay off uh, public workers. I want to see them consolidate layers of government, the prefecture and others. Uh, so there is, a, there is a long list of things uh, that you can do. Uh, from a sort of technical point of view, many of it is actually low-hanging fruit. But politically, in France, it's extremely difficult. If we were having this conversation a couple years ago, we would bring up the, the euro, we would bring up Greece, we would bring up the fact that Europe would be falling apart. Now, since then, France did get downgraded. The, the yields on their bonds, which is a signal whether or not there's confidence or not into France, have been, has improved tremendously. So there's a little bit of a buffer here for Francois Hollande. But in terms of the risk of a potential new downgrade or an additional downgrade, do you worry about that? I don't think downgrades is going to play a big role for France. I don't think they will get downgraded. I mean, they're already admittedly on negative uh, watch from Moody's and, and I believe Standard & Poor's as well. So there is that risk. But France basically benefits from two things. One, that the, everyone recognizes that the European Central Bank would stand behind France uh, if it came to another crisis. And that is true politically also of Germany. And that is why, at the end of the day, France gets a little bit of a pass uh, in terms of market pressure. Our producer is asking me if, uh, if this is going to help the far right politically. I know you touched on it just a bit, but you would think it 
probably does, doesn't it? No, Gives them more I, fire? I don't think there's any doubt that this, because it's going to, these types of cuts will further hurt the French economy at this point. And uh, that, at the end of the day, will uh, help the far right. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And it's really up to uh, President Hollande to, to explain why he's doing what he's doing and how he's going about to doing it and why his way of doing it is the best way for France. And to date, he hasn't done that. Well, Europe's back in headlines again. So is France. I'm not sure this is, these are the headlines they want, but there they are. Jacob Kurgard, thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us on this very